Hey guys, what's going on? Shinobi here. Got another video for you, Diablo 3 theme video. A lot of people have been asking me, Shinobi, how do I find more legendaries? How do I find more gold? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you some tips for finding more legendaries. Now, right now, the best way to make gold is by finding legendaries because they roll the best stats. They're pretty much the best. They can sell really easily and really quick because everybody wants to have full legendaries on their character. And I'm going to give you some tips and some stuff that, for me, really helps out. Um, while doing this and even though I only play nowadays like two three hours a night I find between four to eight legendaries per day um, you know in those two to three hours just because right now I don't have a lot of time to play but you want to optimize the time that you do play you know if you're gonna play you might as well find as many as possible and you might as well make as much gold as possible and who knows maybe you'll find a $250 legendary which is very very rare to do that but if you can do it and sell that hey you know, a couple hours worth of work and you made 250 bucks. Nothing wrong with that. So let's get into the tips right now. Hope you enjoy the video. Don't remember to hit a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Uh, I got more Diablo 3 videos coming for you guys. And be subscribed because I've been doing this for a long time. And my videos get pretty popular for the Diablo 3. And I'm getting more back into the scene for Diablo 3 now that my characters are geared up. And I'm about to move into the apartment and actually be able to dedicate more time to doing this. So let's get into all this stuff right now. Now the first tip is going to be a very, very simple tip that you may just go, oh, why didn't I think of that? Or maybe you already know about it. It's play with the sound on. Now, why is this a factor? Now, I only play with the sound on a little bit. Like, I'll put music in the background or something like that while I play. Uh, or I'll be talking to friends on Skype or something like that. But typically, I put the sound on because when you're killing mobs, you're going to hear the item drop and it's gonna make that plate sounding twain sound when it hits the ground it goes Bang! I'll probably have a clip in the background that you'll know the sound that it makes it's very different the only sound that's very close to it is gonna be when a jewel hits the ground um, but it's definitely very different so make sure you listen for that sound because you don't want to be like just plowing through hundreds of mobs and not even paying attention to the screen or anything like that and just boom then you know you miss out on a legendary some players have done it in the past. It is actually easier nowadays to not miss out on those legendaries like that because they have changed some things. On the mini-map on the top right, you'll see there's like a like radar thing that goes off and it kind of shows you that, hey, a legendary dropped, you better pick it up. And then also the sound of it hitting on the ground as well. And then that beam of light that goes through the sky. So it is easier nowadays. But if you're not, if sometimes you can be, you know, ADHD, you can, you know, slip in and you're just not paying attention whatsoever and you don't have the sound on, you could probably slip up and miss it. So make sure you don't do that and uh, that'll help you out a lot. The next tip is going to be MP level. Which MP level do you play on? I get this question like crazy. I was thinking about making a whole entire video devoted towards it, and I probably will. Um, but as far as MP level, you need to play what's most comfortable and most efficient for you. For instance, if you're doing MP1 and you just completely smash it, and it's just almost like it's not challenging whatsoever, uh, that could be a good thing but also a bad thing because if you're not using your potential you want to play on the highest MP level you can just completely smash but at the same time you want to kind of do it based off of your gear for instance if I can do MP8 pretty easily and maybe die a couple times then you know but it's kind of slow and it's not very efficient then you gotta kind of have to work your way down until you get to the point where you find that real nice groove for me and a lot of players that I've talked to MP3 is actually the best um, I like it because it's really efficient and really great. Now, for instance, let's look at this here. Now, if you do MP1 and you just smash it like crazy, but you do MP2, MP2 the same speed as you do MP1, that's a problem. That's You shouldn't be doing MP1. If you do MP2 the same speed as you do MP3, then you shouldn't be doing MP2. But if you do MP3 a little bit faster than MP4, then you found your nice comfort spot. You want to play on MP3 because it's really based off your of gear. For instance, let's put it this way. A lot of players say to me, no, 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 that's not how it is. You play on MP3, that's the one, that's the best one. We have to look at about it this way. It's more about efficiency. So let's say my gear is the best gear in the game. I can do MP10 pretty easily and I can smash everything else. Well, you want to do the highest MP level that you can. For instance, if I can do MP9 as fast as you can do MP3, I should be doing MP9. However, 
Uh, that's why it's kind of based off of gear a little bit, so take that into consideration. For me personally, I would start with MP1, see how it is, time, like write down how long it takes you to do a full clear, and then do MP2, write down how long it takes you to do a full clear, MP3, do that again, and then see the big difference. And if you see a big drop, then you need to do the one right before that. So say I did MP3 and it took me 15 minutes to, you know, farm my whole farming route. And then MP2 took me like 14 minutes or 13, 12 minutes. And MP1 took me one minute less. But then MP4 was like three minutes more. Okay, that's a big drop right there. So stick with the one that's going to give you the highest MP level. But at the same time, with all the extra bonuses and everything, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're doing the best MP level for your current gear. The next one here is going to sound kind of stupid, but in my opinion, it actually does make a little bit of a difference, and that is don't pick up garbage items. Now, what I mean by garbage items, for me personally, because I farm so much, my list of what is garbage and what is not is probably different than yours. However, for me, I only pick up I level 63 items rings, amulets, legendaries. That's pretty much it. As far as like some eye level 62 stuff, you can get some pallium shoulders, maybe. Uh, however, why do you want to skip doing this? Why do you want to just limit the amount of items that you pick up? Let's put it this way. So let's say that you kill a big pack and he drops nothing good for you. He drops nothing at all. But he drops some mediocre items that could potentially sell for maybe a million gold in a best case scenario, pretty much. Now, if you spend, let's say, five seconds or three to five seconds picking up those items, and then at the end of your farm run, you ID those items and see that they're crap, and then you just end up vendoring them or salvaging them. Let's say you spent five seconds picking up the items. Let's say you spent an extra 30 seconds IDing the items. Now, let's say you do this, you know, in the course of two, three, four hours, you do this, you know, a good amount of times. That can add up to about five, ten minutes worth of time that you just wasted while you were playing. Now it may not seem like a big deal, but for me, I kill a rare pack, champ pack, uh, about every 30 seconds. So for me, if I waste 10 minutes, that's like wasting 20 champ packs while farming. Because you got to be really efficient while you're doing this. So don't even pick up those items. Don't worry about them. Trust me. You may go, well, what if that's that one item? Just don't freak out. Trust me, it's not going to be good. 99% of the time, the eye level 62 and below are going to be garbage. That's just pretty much how it is. So stay away from those type of items. Stick to the I-63 legendaries and rings and amulets. And you'll see that in the end, you're going to make a lot more gold. And it's going to be a lot more efficient. The next one is going to be farming routes. Now, Act 1 and Act 3, in my opinion, are definitely the best. A lot of people will say Act 3 is the best. I have to agree with that. I do like to do Act 1 sometimes just to switch it up so you don't get bored. However, Act 3 does have some good farm routes. I'm probably going to be making a video on doing that in the future. But you want to you want to pick like a farm route that's really comfortable for you, something that's going to be very efficient. Uh, I will be posting a video in the future. You can probably see some gameplay in the background, some areas that I like to go to. I like to go to Bridge of Coruscant. It's very nice. I like to go to the Core of Ariat. I like to go to Stone Fort because you're going to get your keys there as well. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you're doing MP3, your key chance is not going to be that great. But you're mainly farming for legendaries. So killing, I kill him anyways just because you have the chance of getting a key. And he's also a boss mob, so you can get more... Uh, loot off of him than typical mob as well. So definitely uh, really important to find a nice farm route for you. I will be coming out with a video in the future. If it is out while your this video is up, I'll actually have an annotation on the screen that will link you to my farm route for Act 3. That should be coming out pretty quick in the future. So make sure you're subscribed so you can get to that. But um, that's pretty much what I do is I just find a nice farm route that I can continuously k keep killing stuff. You want to pick a route that's going to make you like every minute you should be killing a champ pack, elite pack, or or even less than a minute. So definitely very important and uh, you want to be choosing routes where you can kill high amounts of mobs. If you're going to an area where there's like five trash mobs and a champ pack, that's not that big of a deal. Go to an area where there's like 90 trash mobs and you know champ packs as well and just literally plow through all that stuff and you're just going to increase your chances to get more legendaries.
The next one here is going to be one that I'm going to make a more extensive video on in the future as well, because I'm going to talk about specs for both Barbarian and Demon Hunter, maybe some other classes. However, you want to pick a spec that's going to be a hybrid spec. Now what I mean by this is for something like a Demon Hunter, uh, they have a lot of single target abilities and they have a lot of multi target abilities. Now you want to have your multi target abilities for sure because you want to be plowing through trash mobs like crazy. I'd say about 50 to 60 percent of the time I will find legendaries off of trash mobs uh, rather than finding them off of champ packs. However, uh, you know, you want to make sure that your class is ready for everything. So you need to have some nice AoE. Now for me, I use the uh, elemental arrow with the lightning. Now it's nice because I can self heal myself back up with that. It's really nice for taking out big groups of mobs. It's semi good for single target, but for single target I just use a cluster arrow for that and then also my left click for my um, hatred regen. So that's definitely important that you have some kind of hybrid spec that's going to really help you out here and it's going to really help you get through everything. You want to be ready for every circumstance that you go through. You don't want to like build yourself a completely AoE spec and then go and see, oh man, now I'm doing, you know, Butcher and I'm using an AoE spec and it's going to take you way too long. So make it very efficient, have a nice spec that's a nice hybrid spec. I do have a lot more tips guys, but the last tip I'm going to give you is a pretty simple one. Movement speed does make a big difference. You can get the Ina, Ina's Temperance, which is a uh, pants that give you movement speed. There's belts that give you movement speed. There's bracers like the Lacuna Prowlers that give you movement speed as well. Uh, they don't really have to be that amazing of stats. Um, they're not amazing. They don't add a ton of damage. However, they do give me that extra movement speed and it does make a big difference. You want to be moving through areas a lot quicker. You want to avoid using skills that are going to make you increase your movement speed so you can just stick to damage uh, and survivability type skills for your build. So that way when you get the movement speed, with like, say you get like 12 movement speed on bracers, you have it already on your boots because you should have 12 already on your boots, and so you get it on your pants as well, you're just going to be zipping through the entire axe and just plowing through things even quicker and it definitely really does help out. It helps out with survivability a little bit too so you not get stuck in you know you know frozen or something like that or killed by an arcane beam or something like that. But I do want to thank you guys for watching this video. Hope these tips did help you out. I'm um, gonna be coming out with a lot more videos in the future here. Make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up button it would help me out uh, quite a lot. And until next time, thanks for watching.